Hey again, welcome to Making Social Media. This is an addendum to the original playlist. If you've watched any of my previous episodes, you'll have spotted that when I make a call to action for subscribers, I try to make a joke out of it. Because I'm British, I'm in my 40s, and it's embarrassing. So when I made the YouTube comments tutorial, I had my agent Skype call me. Hilarious, I know. To do that, I need to recreate the look of Skype. I did try just using a screen grab but hit a couple of issues so decided it would be easier to remake it using shape layers and icons. And where did I get those icons from? A website called Font Awesome. They aren't paying me, I just think it's a great resource and it's largely free too. Font Awesome is a downloadable font pack. I use it mainly for web design but there's no reason why you can't use it in After Effects too. To use, you'll first need to install it. Just click this download link. Download the free desktop version, virus check it, unpack and install the fun files. And then you can go ahead and open After Effects, who also aren't paying me. There's way more fonts than letters, so it's not like the P key translates to a play button. What I do is return to the Font Awesome website and search for the sort of icon I'm after. And all these results are returned. You can filter at this stage to only show the free ones. When you see one you like, just click on it. The Font Awesome team have done a great job of making it easy to use. In the page for the icon, just click on the small version at the top and it gets copied to your clipboard and then you can return to After Effects. Make sure the text tool is selected, then click in your comp window and holding control, tap the V key to paste your clipboard. Not being a Mac user, I'm guessing this step is Command and V. Quite often, more often than not, when you paste the icon, it won't show up. And then you have to check the character window, you'll see that the font selected is something other than Font Awesome. Make sure your text layer is selected, and then go to the drop down and find Font Awesome there. And then it's just about attention to detail. For Skype, I added a screenshot at the bottom of the comp, and then use shape layers to recreate the solid elements, using the shape's fill eyedropper to recreate the colours. Then I replaced each icon with its Font Awesome equivalent. Occasionally you find the icon you want is in the Pro version. Fair enough, these guys are providing an excellent free selection, so you can either pay for the Pro version, or you can make do with the nearest free option. Ahem. For the Skype logo, both for the Windows title bar and for the semi-transparent dog on the call screen, Font Awesome also has me covered. I can search for brands on the website too. Not all brands are covered, but I wonder if it's a case that if you build your program using Font Awesome for the UI, then you get a discount if you share your logo? I'd like to think so. Finally for the mouse. Font Awesome also has sorted that too. Just searching for pointer returned both the regular arrow pointer and the clicky finger. I use the text layer's source text to keyframe the change. Recreating interfaces this way is a great way to get a feeling for UX or user experience design. If you're making a fake program for your production, then starting with a real one and adapting it means you'll have all the little details covered. And that's it. The Skype project is included in the description below, as is a link to this incredibly useful resource. Wow, after all these long tutorials, it feels kind of weird to make such a short one. And no expressions either. Um, I guess you can hang around. I was probably just going to put on Netflix.